Welcome back. There was lots of motion on Capitol Hill today on guns, but not a ton of movement. There appears to be some agreement in the Senate, but what they agree on is hardly game changing. It's a narrowly tailored bill to better enforce current background check law. So, with meaningful congressional action on gun uh, restrictions seemingly at a standstill, some frustrated Americans are asking if other countries can serve as an example. During last week's White House listening session on school safety, one survivor of the Parkland, Florida massacre looked to Australia. In Australia, there was a shooting at a school in 1999. And, you know, after that, they took a lot of ideas, they put legislation together, and they stopped it. Can anyone here guess how many shootings there have been in the schools since then in Australia? Zero. It was 35 people who died in that mass shooting that he was referring to in Australia. It was in 1996, not 1999. Afterwards, under a conservative prime minister, automatic and semi-automatic rifles were banned in Australia. They enacted a national registry and a 28-day waiting period for all gun purchases. And 650,000 firearms were taken out of circulation in a national buyback program. But Australia, of course, doesn't have a right to bear arms in their constitution. They also don't have a powerful gun lobby like the NRA. But could Australia's model still have some legs in the United States, say, on semi-automatic weapons or something like that? Joining me now, former Prime Minister of Australia, Kevin Rudd. He's now president of the Asia Society Policy Institute. Prime Minister Rudd, welcome to the show, sir. Good to be on your program. All right. Uh, it is easy for me to say all the different ways what you guys did in Australia can't happen, can't work here in the United States. The biggest one being our constitution. You don't have a right to bear arms in yours. We do. But what would you argue is the, what, what do you believe is transferable from what you guys went through to what we're experiencing now? Well, when my predecessor, a conservative, John Howard, uh, enacted uh, legislation to ban all automatic and semi-automatic weapons from sale in Australia and from importation to Australia, he had national consensus behind him. Even the Sporting Shooters Association of Australia, mm -hmm. our equivalent of the NRA, uh, got behind it. The other thing we did was fund a national gun buyback scheme, mm -hmm. uh, which basically took out about one-fifth the entire gun stock from the country. So looking at America, and I've lived here now for three years, yeah. um, the problem you have is you've got this whole debate about mental health checks, fine. Mm -hmm. But I think if you really want to arrest the, the rate of mass shootings, you've got to do something directly about automatic and semi-automatic weapons. Um, because their ability to just call ma cause mass carnage within a few seconds uh, is there and it's transparent for us all to see. Uh, we saw it in Australia once or twice before 1996, and then we acted. I cannot see how a similar action was taken here, that the Supreme Court of this country would say that the right to bear a semi-automatic weapon mm -hmm. is going to offend your, um, your Second Amendment rights. I don't think so. Well, look, there, there is a lot of people who look at one decision that was made, it's called the Heller decision, that they essentially uh, overturned a, a, a ban, a gun ban in Washington, D in the city of Washington, D.C., as sort of a precedent that says, Gun bans will never be constant. But that's just a nonsense. Uh, Anti-tank weapons, yeah. uh, field artillery, uh, why not just a tactical nuke in terms of the right to bear arms? It's a nonsense. The only people who actually have a right to use or have be in possession of automatic and semi-automatic weapons are members of our military. Mm -hmm. That's what they're there for. Uh, I grew up on a farm in rural Australia. We had lots of wild animals around the place. My father had a single gauge shotgun, which he used infrequently, mm -hmm. uh, often using the butt of the rifle rather than the shooting bit. <laughs> and frankly, we're supposed to have the most dangerous, right. most poisonous critters in the world in our country. <laughs> I don't see how anyone in this country right. uh, has a legitimate need for one of these pump action machines. You're not the, the only Australian that looks at us and says, boy, you guys have a gun culture here. That You guys don't have the same gun culture. Now, some would argue that one of the reasons why we have it in our Constitution is it was written in response to a revolution. And you didn't have that same experience when your Constitution was written. Yeah, but if the British come back, you actually don't need a semi-automatic to deal with it. Can I just say that? <laughs> Things have rolled on. That's true. I, I don't think it's the British we have to worry about. I understand the reason for militia. I'm a student of the Revolutionary War. I f full marks to you guys for winning. In fact, because you won, they set up a convict colony in our part of the world. Well, that's, there you that's go. That's where I got sent. That's just a byproduct. But the bottom line is this. Uh, to... to 
think that you are now helpless as a nation right. to change the laws, I think is just dead wrong, given uh, where the Supreme Court could and should go in the future on any challenge to getting rid of semi-automatic weapons. Can you s see the Supreme Court bench standing up there right. in Washington, D.C. and saying, we're defending right. uh, semi-automatic weapon, semi weapons possession for you, Joe Schlobodnik, out there uh, because of your Second Amendment rights? I don't think so. Well, you came up with an important point. You have to have a national consensus first before you can institute something like this. How did the gun buyback program, it sounds like it's still a rolling program. Explain how that worked and what, how you did entice people. I mean, how much money did they get? Well, basically, I think it was kind of uh, an equation of the, um, the original purchase price of, uh, of the weapon. And when you say there is no gun culture in Australia, well, there is a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, we're a rural country. We're a frontier country. Mm -hmm. uh, my state of Queensland, which is a rural part of Australia, two-thirds of us live outside the cities. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we live and have our being. And so there's a culture which says, I may need a rifle on my farm to deal with, uh, you know, uh, wild animals or stuff that's going to affect the stock or rip things to pieces. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But if you ask your average farmer mm -hmm. or your average sporting shooter who shoots clay targets and whatever, do they need a semi-automatic? Even those guys in my country, including my father and all those before him, would say, you're nuts. <laughs> what else did you do to address people's concerns on security? Because some of this has to do with, well, I don't know if I can trust the government to, to keep me safe. Well, I think in this country you've suffered from sort of half a century of government bashing. Uh, where basically, government equals evil equals bad, and therefore we can't trust them with anything. I mean, that is a deep cancer in this society which you can turn around. But I think there's a bit of a national learned helplessness syndrome here in the United States about this. You can do it, guys. If it's the United States of America, you're leader of the free world. We can you do can, anything we want. You can yeah. change your laws. And, you know, those of us who live here actually would like to see you do it. Uh, I, I always love getting a perspective on us from the outside, from people going, why aren't you tackling this? Yeah, but we like this country. There's so many good things in America. This is just nuts. Well, we get most things right. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Kevin Rudd. It's uh, nice meeting you. Thanks for coming in. Good to be with you. Uh, and talking this through. Much appreciated. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.